Since I started being a professional composer, my work has partly shifted uh, strongly in the direction of conceptualism. And the reason therefore lay, I think, in our time. Now there's technology, for example, in the de development of new music. And as far as I can see, this shift to conceptualism is not only a personal development of mine, but also a movement I observe uh, in the scene with other people as well. So maybe there is a new conceptualism. But what is conceptualism in music? In 1967, pioneer of concept art in the visual arts, Solovit published his sentences on concept art. So, after these sentences, I want to formulate now my sentences on musical concept art. Some of my sentences are more or less uh, adopted from other artists, for example, from Saul Levitt. I will first simply read through these sentences and then again start from number one. I have 19 sentences and then go from sentences to sen sentence to sentence and comment on it and give um, examples. They are not dogmas. I don't, I, I, at least I don't want to make rules. These are, I would call, orientation marks. It's uh, self-provocations. It's um, a try to, to, to find at least a, a formulation. Okay, number one. The idea is a machine that produces the work of art. The process should have required no intervention. It should take its own course. This is so Levitt, 1967. Two, the concept machine today is, above all, the algorithm. Third, the processing material of the machine today is the total archive. Four, details, rhetorical means, and formal design are usually only suitable in the form of ready-mades or by means of chance generators. Five, for each work of art that is performed physically, there are many unperformed variants. Levitt, 1967. The sensual appearance is only one aspect of the work to which more or less value can be granted. Each piece of new music has conceptual aspects. My teacher, Matthias Sparlinger. Number eight. Not all ideas have to be implemented. Levitt. <laughs> Number nine. On the other hand, one can also compose a detailed form out of many different concept variants or pieces. Enrichment with jokes is also okay. <laughs> Number ten. A trivial idea cannot be bungled through a beautiful or expressive design. However, it is difficult to bungle a good idea. Again, Levitt, 1967. <laughs> 11. A good idea can be bungled through a beautiful and expressive design. <laughs> Number 12. Ideas are the most expressive and most beautiful of all. 13. Improvisation is rarely musical concept art, least of all when the improvisation is good. 14. Music does not have to be self-explanatory. The composer does not need to shy away from intermediate ingredients like text, video, performance. Indeed, it makes perfect sense to articulate them. Do not hide important information in the program notes. Number 15. Dare to make public the even slightest idea if you believe there is something in it. But give it a proportionate effort. No more than a small text for a small idea. <laughs> Number 16. A piece of conceptual music does not have to be heard, completely heard. 17. Music is only new music when it raises the question, is this actually music? <laughs> Matthias Sparlinger, 1992, in Darmstadt. Number 18. The more unmusical, the better. And last. <coughs> Out of conceptualization emerges contextualization. Peter Weibel, 1993. So these are my 19 sentences on musical concept art, and now the lecture will be again all these uh, run through through all these sentences, but now with comments on each sentence. Again, number one: the idea is a machine that produces the work of art. The process should have required no intervention; it should take its own course. This was formulated by Solovitz, 1967. So, what does that imply? 
this implies um, for me, first of all, that there is no individual expressive details, so to say. The piece is the product of a machine. All results are related to the machine and not to my seismograph. Uh, a classical example is the piece um, Poem Symphonique by Sergei Ligeti from the 1960s. Uh, I guess you all know it, but let's get it. <laughs> So these 100 metronomes, once they are started, there's no intervention by the composer. He doesn't say, oh no, I want to have no, no in this one. That's not, uh, not, uh, not appropriate to do that. Once it's started, no intervention happens. Or, for example, it's gonna rain by Steve Reich. Second, the concept machine today is above all the algorithm. That's a reason, I think, why concepts we listen now comes up again, because there are so many automated processes uh, not only with physical machines, but also with information, with uh, these algorithms on our computers. For example, in music, I took a recording of the second string quartet by Brian Fernio, played by RTT String Quartet, and I fed it into the software Band in a Box, which there the algorithm tries to detect harmonies, tries to detect uh, a certain uh, meter, and apply it to it, and that's how it sounds then. Conceptual pieces don't have to be heard completely. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a, an idea of digitalization. Digitalization now in, the, in, in putting a grid over something which is meant to be very, very fluid. But now we, in fact, here's uh, really a, a, an aspect of the work of Fernihau which was not so present thus far, I would say. Um, but the algorithm did the job. Um, or also, I'm very interested in using um, algorithms attached to new hardware. Uh, for example, the work with um, I like to work with um, 3D sensors, um, and especially with sensors which are um, uh, consumers um, uh, electronics, like the Kinect, uh, which children are playing tennis with it or whatever, and you can attach uh, daily movements um, to the Kinect and then uh, to transform it into sound. harmless this uh, housework but of course this has the aspect of, um, of the surveillance uh, methods that are possible also with uh, sensors. Number three, the processing material of the machine today is the total archive. The second big reason why conceptualism in my opinion now comes up is the availability of music on the internet which I call the total archive, the biggest archive um, ever known um, and the tendency is that all of history, which can be digitized, will sooner or later be digitized and be available on the net. Those of you who have a smartphone, you maybe know the app Shazam in the pub, you can put it in the air and it says, ah, oh, it's this song. Imagine a new music concert or so, you will be able to put it on the air and then you see, oh, it's already was done in the 1950s. <laughs> so, <laughs> Some maybe at one day there will be available this app as well, um, but 
already now it's the reality that we have this gigantic archive also with new music and so you get much more aware in my opinion what all these things already have um, are already done they don't have to be done again but they can be material material for further concepts and whenever you need something to fill then uh, something for your for your form for your dramaturgy take what's there for example i would say there might be the case you write an orchestra piece you need a um, a noise field so orchestra noise field then take a page of Lachenmann, uh, you don't have to invent the wheel again, just take what's there. Um, so, <coughs> as would for example say that almost all sounds are discovered. So, um, this gives you and um, forces you to shift uh, at least a bit to concepts. And an example for that, therefore, is by media artist Cory Archangel, who uh, made a reinterpretation of the piano pieces Opus 11 by Anna Schönberg, these early expressionistic pieces. But he let them play through a, a big amount of a collection of video snips from YouTube where there are kittens walking over keyboards. <laughs> Rhetorical means and formal design are usually only suitable in the form of ready-mades or by means of chance generators. This refers to number one, the idea is a machine that produces the work of art. So no intervention, no individual expression happens in concept art. But it can occur as a ready-made. Of course, in this funny how piece before, uh, my piece for this Aditi Street Quartet, so to say, there is individual expression and detail in, and form, but it's the one of Fermihau, not of mine. Or also, a um, sort of um, ready made is in my piece Fremdarbeit. There was, I received a commission for a new piece, and then I looked on the internet for, I heard that there are, especially in China, there are composers who offer their skills, um, they can be hired to compose a new music for you. And um, so I found a guy in China and a programmer in India, and I've sent them several existing pieces of mine, and said, okay, now I want to have a, a style copy of my music now for this new instrumentation. And uh, so this is the question, and then they, they wrote new pieces, uh, therefore. And so it's about authorship um, and the question of identity, whose music is this now? And it's uh, also a matter of, of globalization and uh, of exploitation, because they were very cheap, because they're living in, uh, in these cheap wages countries. So it was much, much cheaper than what I received for this commission. And I would also call this a sort of ready-made, even though it was newly composed uh, and by, by humans um, with their expression, but it's, I would still call it a, um, a ready-made. Let's look a bit at this, this uh, the first performance in Berlin in 2009, and I've moderated this piece, of course people had to know the concept. Jetzt äh, gibt es noch andere Möglichkeiten, äh, Variate zu machen. Ich wollte das auch äh, nicht nur auf den Hans, sondern auch maschinell äh, was erstellen. Also mit künstlicher Intelligenz. Und habe eine Ausstellung gemacht in Indien für billige Programmierer. Da hat das Ausgabe geholfen. Und äh, habe das gewissermaßen in einem kleinen Kompositionswettbewerb äh, ausgerichtet. Das müsste Programmierer sein, der auch mit, äh, in, mit Musik äh, vertraut ist. Und da habe ich dann den Programmierer äh, Ramesh Nurabai ausgewählt, der hervorragende Referenzen hat. Wenn sie dieselben Stücke wie die Jump vor bekommen hat, habe ich auch Nurabai gegeben. Und er hat daraus äh, sein Daten und Programm gemacht. Das hat für mich nur 15 Dollar gekostet. Übrigens bekomme ich von der GEMA 15 Euro für die Euro. Nurabai hat mir ausgerechnet, dass meine Musik klang, wenn ich so 25% aus der Interesse steht. 
Tafel ca ca 70% Doppelzüge, 20% Sprache und 10% Klassik. Insgesamt also 25% Anteil Samples und 75% Instrumentalklänge. Davon 53% Grundverlustnis und 23% der Rest ist undefinierbar. Mittlere Lautstärken machen ca. 46% aus und laute Stellen nur 39% und leise 15%. Es gibt mindestens 30 verschiedene Klangfarben. Und jedes Stück hat im Schnitt aber noch ca. 35% Eigenständigkeit, was dann ein Zufallsgenerator für das machen muss. Und ein solches Stück hat er jetzt also aus den gegebenen Daten generieren lassen. from the sensual realization, it's an idea open for several realizations. And it's also this, the destruction of the masterwork myth. So you could think of other ways how Beethoven could have realized his Nine Symphony or Mozart his Kleine Nachtmusik, etc. Zum Geburtstag. On any instrument, play a chromatic scale upwards or downwards, as soft as possible, in moderate tempo, the last possible tone as loud as possible and sustained. that the essential appearance is only one aspect of the work to which more or less value can be granted. That means sometimes the pure idea is enough. This is a piece of music, but it's only an idea which <coughs> relates to music. There is a guy or someone who twitters every day one core piece on Twitter. It's his anonymous. I couldn't find out who he is. So, for example, number 69 was bury the score for a tombow by a dead composer. After some time has passed, dig it up, perform what remains. I think it's only a text. It's not uh, really supposed to be realized. Or what I've written once. 
a crescendo that never stops again. Well, what I'm currently working on is um, very small sheet music pieces, which are only notes. Dieser Schnäbel has done something uh, in the similar in the 60s or 70s. Um, it's not supposed to be played, or it cannot really be played. It's only music to be read. Or the idea is realized, but you only listen to a part of it. For example, that's the case with installations, of course, which are going on and on and on, and you yourself decide how much time you spend with them normally. Um, and what I like, for example, is at the moment to make what I call YouTube installations. Um, I mean that you make very, very long YouTube videos which are definitely too long to watch completely. For example, in the piece The Subject Object Problem, I took the, from Arthur Schopenhauer the book Die Welt als Wille und Vorstellung, um, and each word triggers a tone. Um, and the word subject triggers, I think, a high tone, and the word object a low tone, and all the other words trigger a middle tone. Um, the book is very thick, you might know, it's about 800 pages. The whole video takes one hour and 43 minutes. That's how it sounds like. Now I will fa make fast forward to two minutes and 30 seconds because there is a very strong dialectic. <laughs> Expressionist uh, poet. It's about 180 poems, and I made a sonification um, of it. I took the poems as a binary code, so only zeros and ones, and it's played on the violin. Either a zero is an open string, and a one is uh, the same tone. It's the D played with the first finger, which is notated either with a zero or a one. So this is a musicalization of the, the poems of Georg Drake. It takes 11 hours and 5 minutes. Um, feel free to listen to it on YouTube. I think it's for now enough. Related to my later point, number 16, that a piece of conceptual music does not have to be heard completely. Mm, another example, a famous example, is the film Empire by Andy Warhol. A good example in the visual arts is um, Santiago Sierra. For example, his um, piece 160 centimeter line tattooed on four people. So these are four heroin addicted prostitutes from uh, Mexico City who do this, they get tattooed uh, for, I don't know, eight dollars um, each. So he is, uh, what he is focusing on is that people are doing such extreme things for so little money, or he hires people just to be in a museum and stare at the wall in the corner for ten dollars a day. And um, of course it does not have to be beautiful. This is not beautiful at all, and he makes documentations of these actions. Uh, but only very bad and um, <coughs> unprofessional black and white photographs. It's really not, of course, not supposed to be beautiful. The central appearance shouldn't be too beautiful. Mm. And so I would also say in new music that um, it's not always important what actually sounds and how good it sounds. And I do not know a lot of people in new music who dare to say that. I come to this point also later, mm, but in, as, uh, in, in the 
concept art in the um, visual arts, it is this <coughs> posture, for example, formulated by Solevit, that um, it shouldn't be um, too much for the, for the retina. It comes, comes from Duchamp, Master Duchamp already said he wants to make a non-retinal art. And, but in music, as far as I know, the sound quality, the beautifulness of the beauty of sound is an almost not uh, inevitable paradigm. So we have this very high level of building instruments, very high level, of course, of instrumentalists and architects who, who make uh, the architecture of uh, concert halls. So, and everything is very expensive. It uh, needs subsidies. So all this effort, which is made for music and which is perfectly fine for a lot of music, but it's almost the only way how new music is performed. So at least in concert hall, where all this very expensive uh, effort is uh, done, it is almost um, it becomes almost automatically kind of embarrassing or ridiculous to do only one single conceptual piece, um, which shouldn't sound good. Um, even though this concept artist did not intend to make a provocation about um, doing something in the concert hall which the concert hall is not made for. We just want to make a, a, a concert, but the concert hall is not made for this. And also the, the high level of CD standard quality, Dolby surround, etc. I think it has to do with the pro still the problem of atonality that since this shock in 1910, uh, there was, composers always had to claim that they are professionals because of course there was the, then the public said, oh you cannot compose, my 40 year old daughter, daughter can do the same. So composers were all the time had to, to explain that we are highly educated and this is everything is highly professional um, and even a neg negationist like Helmut Lachenmann again says he wants, it is a kind of beauty what he is composing. So in my opinion it seems a bit as if new music would, um, um, how to say, um, limit himself, himself or herself itself from really going over boundaries. New music itself, not, uh, not uh, someone from the outside. Whereas in concept art, for example, Solid in 1967 said that uh, traditional art is art which is for the perception, which is for the eye. Whereas a concept artist uh, better takes not, does not make oil paintings, but uses uh, numbers, using words, using photographs, um, something like that. So the question would be what would Solid um, say when it's, uh, the talk is about music? What are then the alternatives. Um, and I would say nowadays, for example, it is the electronic means that you can do something uh, without this expensive effort of concert hall. You can produce something on the computer and you can also distribute it and make, pu make it public from the computer. So there you don't have the expectation like in the concert hall when it's clear that on YouTube it's uh, MP3 quality. Number seven. Each piece of new music has conceptual aspects. Matthias Spalin, with his 2009, I mean, he said it all the time. I studied with him, but in 2009 at least he published it, the, the sentence. So on the other hand, each piece of new music, which Spalin means atonal music, has conceptual part because since atonality there is no safe background anymore, each new piece has to have an individual conceptual framework. For example, you could call the string quartet a concept, or a string quartet composed for the Arditi quartet. You could call a concept, I call it the Arditi stream quartet, because it's one big stream, all composers are throwing their scores into. Um, so this leads to an institution critique, um, because I often have the impression that even though there are composers who write lots of notes, the concept of the piece, there is a concept also of the piece, but this concept was not composed by the composer, but by the institution. Peter Uplinger, for example, he says, composers are no longer the designers of the music, 
but only the interior designers of the music. The concept is not theirs. Not all ideas have to be implemented, so that it's... Um, yeah, it can be sufficient to realize an LB only once or not at, as all, at, not, um, at all. So you might know that after inventing the ready-made, Marcel Duchamp decided to limit his ready-mades extremely. Of course, he could have done a ready-made each day, but in fact, uh, these are almost all known ready-mades Marcel Duchamp realized. It's only very few. Number nine. On the other hand, one can also compose a detailed form out of many different concept variants or pieces. And Richard with chokes is also okay. This leads to the question of form, of working with time, and with ways of presenting musical concept art. In the piece that was already shown a bit, um, Charts Music, the idea was to take these uh, values from uh, stock charts and to transcribe them into melodies. This idea was already done by other composers, but I've done, it, I've done it at the climax of the financial crisis in 2009, which led to very specific melodies, and I've fed these melodies into a commercial composition software for children, Songsmith, which was released exactly at this time. And again, the algorithm is doing the job. Let's listen once more at the very first specimen. Uh, I can see the video. So, the, it's a contradic contradiction between the economic downfall and a music which expresses the opposite. So, that's the concept, and as in point five, as I will saw a little bit, that a concept can be realized in different variants. Um, and I can make then a whole composition out of these different variants. Uh, and that's what I actually did in that piece. I took various charts, um, as you can see, not only from, from the crisis for financial crisis, but also concerning the Iraq war, very curious, uh, very nice uh, chart I found on the internet. And out of all these charts, then I could compose a whole Piece. I don't show it now because it will be played tonight in the concert. Um, I compare this with the Petersburg hanging, or someone that said in the US it's called Salon hanging. Um, so you have a lot of uh, small um, pictures and then gathered together um, next to each other. A big amount of ideas. Another example is this video piece. can be bundled through a beautiful and expressive design. This point might be more controversial. For example, I would say, at least nowadays, that the music of Lachenmann has this fate. His is much too beautiful. 
uh, in a direct manner. Not in a negation, but in a direct manner. It doesn't hurt at all now. It is composed much too masterful. It, um, it destroys its own concept of critique on, on bourgeois concert um, habits. Mm. Yeah. Number 12. Ideas are the most expressive and most beautiful form. So this is a new definition of expressiveness and beauty. An idea itself has an expression and a beauty, not only the sensual experience. This point I wanted to insert. Uh, improvisation is rarely musical concept art, least of all when the improvisation is good. It's a widespread uh, notion that improvisation has something to do with concept art. I would say almost not at all. At least if I stick to my very first point, that the idea is a machine that produces the work of art. Improviser improvisers are not machines. On the opposite, they create all the time individual details. 14. Music does not have to be self-explanatory. The composer does not need to shy away from intermediate ingredients, text, video, performance, whatever. Indeed, it makes perfect sense to articulate them. No hiding important information in the program notes. Uh, for example, in this piece I showed before, the Fremdarbeit piece, uh, where I hired these contract composers from Asia, it was important that people knew the concept. The music itself did not explain this, but people had to know it. Or it would be a really different piece if it was just performed as a new music piece without any description around it. It's no surprise that John Cage was himself um, very, very present as a performer um, and as a lecturer and his course were exhibited. Um, think for a moment, what would have done, what, have, what, what would have been if John Cage would have never told people how he composed his music? The music itself would not have explained that it is about chance operations, that it's about Buddhism, um, etc. So the music is not, in, I think it's not self-explanatory. Mm. And a moment. Um. And it's a, a deficit of the, um, of the program notes that it is so unclear whether they are important or not. I think uh, sometimes it's uh, really a problem that, um, that there is an important information in the program notes, but it, I'm, it's not clear if how I should get this information. I mean, I get the program note, but maybe I come just on time to the concert, the light is already dark, and then I cannot read it anymore. And it's strange that the composers, they are right, all these exact rhythms, whereas the program note is, so to say, a, a installation. You can read it whenever you want. During the piece, where there are um, set tablets, I can read in my own tempo the program note. This is a kind of strange uh, relationship. Um, so, therefore, I would say, Make if, the, if there is important information, don't write it in the program notes, make a moderation, make any kind of projection of it, whatever. Um, and it's very strange, I think also it's quite strange, that in music theatre, where we have several media, not only music, but in most music theatre pieces, there's music all the time, since Wagner. Um, Lachenmann's Mädchen is a orchestra piece, in my opinion, and it can be sold on CD, that's no problem with it. I have a problem with it because I would say, if it's music theater, it, the music, I would say, is not possible to be sold on CD. I mean, there, there might be possibilities to do that, but um, first of all, I would say, music theater music is something different than music on CD. Mm. And that's, so that's also an institutional problem, I would say, that there is, um, you have sometimes really to fight, therefore, that you have an additional media implemented, for example, in concert hall. Mm. So, 
Mm, and it's a widespread notion that people say, I don't, I don't want to have additional information. I want to listen to the music. Um, only in the last issue of the German uh, magazine Seiltans, Stefan Dres wrote, for example, um, that I don't. It, music is, is more or less is mostly is bad when I have to know something in addition. So mm. it might be a nice idea that music is self-explanatory, but. Uh, why is this an idea? It can also be nice to have uh, an addition and this absolute music or pure music, there's still enough of it there. So this um, purism this of, of the only the one media of music and maybe you see the people, the performers on stage, but primarily you're listening to the music um, is again a problem if you want to make concept art in music because concept artists, concept art often needs an additional information or, uh, or composers work, concept artists work with the possibility of having an additional information. For example, the Russian composer Anton Vasilyev, he makes um, piano pieces, I mean for, for piano samples in fact, and um, he says he takes any algorithmic chunk uh, he has, um, and then he takes any, <coughs> any um, headline from the daily news, and this is then the title of the piece. For example, in this case, the piece is called um, Crisis of the Liberal Party. Um, there are desperately uh, the search for new uh, people who vote for the Liberal Party. That's the title of the piece, and that's how it sounds. Takes four minutes. So, does this music express uh, the fact that there is a crisis at the Liberal Party? I don't know, but and I think it's again. This is a, I, this is a YouTube video. And it's, I think it fits perfectly for YouTube because you stare all the time at this title. Where if it would be played in concert hall and it's only in the program note, the title, I think it wouldn't work. But here you see all the time Crisis of Liberal Party and listen to this abstract piano music, there it works. I, I like, um, I call this prepared listening. This comes from Chan Cage, of course, uh, who coined the term prepared piano. But you cannot also prepare the piano, but you can prepare the listening by giving an additional information, for example, with the help of moderation. Um, I made an interesting experience with the piece Fremdarbeit at the premiere where I moderated it. I can say I was quite ironic or almost sarcastic. Um, so, okay, let's listen now to this music of this um, Chinese composer, what he tries to write for me and then people said yeah you're right the, the music was really bullshit and I thought oh no that's that's not fair um, so the next time next performance I had to do it in English and I was not so well prepared and I but I wanted to try to do it differently so I wanted to be more objective or even gentle to say okay let's, let's listen now to this um, to this music let's see how the task was fulfilled and then people said, yeah, the music was quite good. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think that they play it better or worse. There's, there are also um, um, psychological experiments that you have, for example, 20 women, and they are divided into two groups by chance, and they all get the same mathematical um, task, but one group, in addition, gets a small text where it says, that women can't, are not good in math because of the evolution, it's simply a fact that they can't. And then, in fact, this group is worse than the other one. But only because they were prepared, because they realized, yeah, I can't do it, so okay, shit, I can't. And in the same way, you can prepare the listening itself. Mm, and then, when you have uh, an additional information, you can, I would call it, then you can write intervals, not intervals between C and F sharp, but an interval between the music and the title, 
an interval between a music and a um, and, and whatever. And that's how I interpret also the idea of relational music, different from program music. Program music tries to also Sprach Zarathustra, wants to make music out of also Sprach Zarathustra. Whereas I would say a relational music is a relation which is not consonant but dissonant, so to say. Mm, I mean, in this piece where I took the, um, these melodies from the financial crisis, there is it's the, the contradiction between where the, what expresses the music, the music is, uh, is really bad pop music, and the, um, the source where I have these melodies from is <coughs> disaster. Every semitone downwards is billions of dollars lost. And, um, and this kind of relational music makes it possible that you can make a piece which is in C major and in 4 4 meter. And still, I would say this is new music. No pop musician would write such a piece. It is new music because there is a contradiction in it. And I would say that, again, um, connecting to what was said before, that this, what I would call this research for new material in terms of searching for new sounds, which was at least a big idea in 20th century, uh, and still there are composers who are doing things like this, um, but it comes to an end. Uh, there is a point where you have really knocked on every square millimeter on the cello and whatever. Um, so this, I think that it comes to an end. And we have all these books now already where everything is, uh, all these extended techniques, uh, written down and how to notate them and so on and so forth. So it's, everything is, one of these books is by me, Loud Bank, so also, also electronic techniques is, is the same with all these electronic techniques, I would say. And then more extension is possible by creating intervals with additional text, with additional video, with additional graphics, with performance. Voilà. 15. Dare to make public the even slightest idea, if you believe there's something in it. But give it a proportionate effort, no more than a small text for a small idea. Again, an example from this Twitter composer, Tex Coraday. An orchestra simultaneously spits chewing gum as hard as possible at a large tum-tum. It's a small idea, nothing more, nothing very special. Don't compare it with Gruppen from Stockhausen. But it's at least worth to be published at Twitter, I would say. And I mean, it's, it's an orchestra piece, but of course an orchestra is, is expensive. It's okay that this remains a text. Number 16. A piece of conceptual music does not have to be completely heard. For me it's already the case with John Cage that um, I don't listen to this music um, to the whole pieces of John Cage. I mean, I love music uh, and I, I love to, uh, to, to listen to music, but I'm a critical listener and boredom can sometimes be okay, but seldom, I would say. Um, but for me, it's definitely the case that John Cage is maybe the biggest composer of the 20th century, but I don't listen to his music uh, in the whole length. At this point, I would like to go a bit into history. Conceptualism was in the fine arts, a revolution, and there it's nowadays um, a very common way of producing and perceiving. Um, when you go to the Documenta or to Biennales, whatever, you very often see these pieces where there is an idea in the foreground and it's not about the expressiveness, uh, not about the subjectivity in every detail, but on the other hand, there is it's a, a metaphor, for example, there, or simply an action. Yeah, for example, Santiago Serra is now a very famous um, artist, or Damien Hirst, or Ai Weiwei. These are all more or less concept artists. I mean, they don't call themselves really, it's not a revolution like we saw the bit in the 60s. They are simply using these techniques, they're using the genre of concept art. There's nothing special about it, so to say. 
Whereas in music history, concept art is quantitatively quite small, let's say. I mean, there was John Cage, of course, Lamonte Young, Evan Lussier, Dieter Schnabel, Christian Wolff, and the Fluxus artists. These are more or less the, is that the canon of the pioneers. Yoko Ono and Namjoon Pike, they are already not really composers because they, they, they left music, in fact. They were composers, they left it and founded their <laughs> own genres like performance art or media art. Urs Peter Schneider, Clarence Barlow and uh, hans Joachim Hespers also delivered some pieces or also the middle of Stockhausen aus den sieben Tagen or Matthias Spadinger with his text pieces, Konzepte. Judge Ligeti's poem for 100 metronomes was only a singular piece in his oeuvre, similar to Steve Reich's early works, or the Bolero by Ravel. Um, in the 1980s and 90s, for example, Tom Johnson, Christian Markley, and Peter Ablinger uh, came up. And of course, there are more composers, but I think you could say, you agree with me, that quantitatively, this is quite a small part of new music of 20th century. And one main reason, therefore, is that music, I think, is time-based media. This, it has its own defi defined time apiece, and as a listener, then you expect that this time is somehow filled with something interesting all the time. So uh, people expect something de with details in this range of time. Because you know, you know, music is played in concert hall, and there you are a prisoner. Uh, you, if you are in prison for the duration of the concert, and you have to listen to everything. So, uh, um, whereas in an exhibition, you are free to choose on your own uh, how much time you spend with a piece of art. And then an artist can only realize one single idea, but in a concert hall, this is almost unacceptable to do only one idea. Again, because of all this effort and because people are imprisoned in concert. Of course, to be a prisoner in concert is a great thing, a great opportunity for composers to force people to experiences. I'm using this opportunity in other pieces a lot, of course, but for some concepts, it's uh, rather a problem. Mm, for example, mm, Sebastian Lütgert, um, he made a, a piece of art called Weiser Text. He took a novel by the German author Martin Weiser, which was just um, published a year before. So it was about copyright, because he simply took this novel without asking the publisher, without asking Weiser, and Martin Weiser is an um, economically uh, relevant author. Um, he just took it and exposed this novel. But he exposed it as, again, as a kind of computer code. So, and it looked like this. It was a very big, three times four meters, I think, and very, very small printed code. And theoretically, you could type it again or scan it, and then the Weiser novel would come out of it. <coughs> of course, no one does it but he points on the question of, of copyright. <coughs> now you could imagine to realize this differently. It's, the piece is not about how he printed, that it is green and it is, uh, has this size, that's not the point. So he could also realize this idea, of, say, with sound. So you could uh, maybe, whatever, um, attach each um, ASCII value of each letter to a MIDI value in sound. But then I would think this whole novel would be 30 minutes of cryptic sound. And of course, these 30 minutes are not interesting 30 minutes to listen to. So, but Sebastian Lütgert, he didn't want to torture his audience. He wanted to have a good way of presenting his concept. So it is, uh, of course, a very good choice not to use a time-based media like music, but a, what do you say, a space-based media, like um, printing it on a canvas. Or another um, example is um, German artist Peter Röhr. He was called the, the German um, Andy Warhol. He died at the age of 24 in um, 1968, I think. Um, 
his only concept he realized in his short life was the idea of serialization that he took from anything from mass culture, any photograph, and put it on uh, this serial way. This, uh, uh, how much is it? 30 times um, the, this cup of coffee, or uh, 32 times this photograph of a car. And so it was consequent that he also experimented with sound and image. But in fact, this is very rare. So he made three or four tape pieces where there was one sample repeated 40 times. Whereas he made hundreds of these kinds of pictures. And I think it's somehow not, not convenient or it's not, it does not really work. We have having a tape with 40 times the same sample looped Whereas it looks much more interesting, it simply it, it fits more to our habits of, of perceiving an uh, artwork uh, by realizing the concept this way. So um, in the exhibition, you can choose your time on the time on your own. Whereas uh, in when you have a defined length of a piece in the concert hall, it is really something different. You cannot, to say, the central appearance is not so important, you cannot, you almost can't say this in concert form, I think. Um, and for me as a recipient, I would also say in concert form, that's, that's, some, that's not good. Um, but I would say a solution is again on the internet where I can click to the next link if I don't like it anymore. So I can leave the, so to say, concert hall. Um, but the pieces like the piece by Cory Archangel, um, Schönberg, Opus 11, Cute Kittens, is now not also shown on the internet, but on exhibitions. Last year there were in Germany two big exhibitions of sound art. So exhibitions only dedicated to sound art, which is a new thing. There was at the Zentrum für Kunst und Medientechnologie, the ZKM in Karlsruhe, the exhibition sound art, and in Darmstadt, the Mathildenhöhe, a house full of music. And um, I can say I liked it very much, and especially the house full of music. In all newspapers, the critics, they were enthusiastic about this exhibition. Um, it was also, it was solved technically very clever. Uh, you had to have uh, 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 headphones and with the Bluetooth system, whenever you came into the radius of a piece, then you could listen to it. And they only took pieces which are not longer than around five minutes, so that you could, in say, two hours, go through the whole exhibition. <laughs> and only last week, I. Uh, received the information that the MoMA in New York will in summer make the, his first, uh, its first exhibition dedicated to sound art. So I think this has quite a future. Mm, and uh, yeah, it's, you could also again call it a kind of Petersburg hanging, which was the case in Darmstadt. Mm, and I hope so that will, there will be further ex exhibitions like this. Okay, next point. Music is only new music when it raises the question, is this actually music? It might look old-fashioned, the sentence, but I think this sentence becomes up-to-date again, as I realized that some people say to my work that it is not music or not really music. But I am, I would say I'm a musician, I'm a composer, I'm not a video artist. Uh, all the videos I'm doing are conceptually done. For example,
Lieblings, was inspired by äh, das Mädchen mit den Schwefel, Schwefelhölzern von äh, bei Helmut Lachenmann. There is, uh, maybe one, you, you know it, there is, um, I mean, this piece is about the coldness of society, and there is uh, one section where there is a kind of, um, what's it, Zähneklappern, Tooth? Um, Chattering. What? Teeth chattering. Louder? Teeth chattering. Chattering, okay. So there was a teeth chattering area, so to say, and the choir was uh, on stage <laughs> and they were looking at this choir and doing these rhythms down on roads. Uh, for me, it's so ridiculous in my opinion. But I, said, but I like the idea of teeth chattering, but I want to do it, I want to have real teeth chattering. So you can do it with the help of video, of course not in concert. In concert hall it is not cold enough that you can do this. Really, you have to do it artificially. I want to have it naturally. So Berlin is very cold in winter. It was really minus 15 <coughs> degrees Celsius. Um, so I uh, could make this texture of tooth shattering. Um, this is, um, by the way, an idea that I'm following very often. I mean, this is, you could say, this is churchy legacy, this idea of having a texture, an orchestra piece with pizzicati. And I like to use these avant-garde ideas, like a sound uh, texture, but applying it to somehow real life, with the help, for example, with video. Again, that's why I bring this example. Is this music? I mean, because you have to watch the video. It's not video art, um, but you have to see this additional information. Or a second example of this um, row. Oh no, sorry, I hear, I hear this. I would call this um, video music because you, you have to, it's music, but you have to see the video. The question was before, what about broadcasting it on, on radio? Of course, it's not possible to broadcast it on radio. You have to see the video. Or is this music a keyboard, so a piano keyboard, held vertically, press two keys, one after the other, the MIDI numbers of the floors in which the planes of 9-11 crashed into? The more unmusical, the better. A sentence, uh, no, sorry. Mm, I would say, as a consequence, um, be as unmusical as possible. At least for a professionally educated composer. Unforgotten is a sentence by, a sentence by Ravel. I have written one masterpiece, the Bolero. Unfortunately, there's no music in it. And the Bolero is for sure a pioneer work of musical concept art. Or Stefan Hetzel, the composer, says, Cage was a bad composer, but new, new music needs much more of these bad composers. In my piece, Zeitgehöft, I have made a, I make a musicalization of the entire work of the poet Paul Celan. I attached every letter <coughs> to a specific pitch. So this is the entire work of Paul Celan, brought into music. It takes three hours. 
this has for me to do a lot with um, the tradition of new music because Paul Celan is, has become such a cliche in, uh, in new music and expressive uh, music pieces were oh, 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 in this way with this uh, musicalized. So I, the only possibility to, to make it the music out of Celan poems now, I would say, is make it the unmusical as possible. Or I made a musicalization of the um, discussion, dis discussion page of the um, Wikipedia article on music. Um, here is the description. So all versions of the discussion page of the Wikipedia article about music from 1st August 2011 until 14th January 2013. So these are 72 versions of this discussion page. Uh, I've made a certain sonification that's now not so important. Um, and one of the threads in the talk about music on Wikipedia was entitled Mention of Rhythm in the Introduction, perhaps. University of Dead Philosophers, I take a MIDI keyboard and but I've reprogrammed it in a way that it does it, the sound doesn't come when you press the key but when you release the key, which goes completely against your, your feeling as a pianist. So I gave this keyboard then to professional pianists and they tried to play it and I was like, oh. How's that? Um, and now I'm playing on this keyboard a Fug by Bach out of the Art of Fug. And please believe me, I trained very hard. Um, I, tr it's, I played it rhythmically correct, <laughs> but due to this programming, the result is a very deconstructed fook. <laughs> frequencies, I was to remove all audible frequencies from a sound file. Or 
play a violin piece on the piano with the violin fingering. I come to the end. My last point of conceptualization emerges contextualization. A sentence from German curator Peter Weibel. As the sensual appearance in concept art is relativated, it is almost natural that contextualization out of the sonic domain takes place. So, for instance, political aspects of music come into focus. The last piece I want to show is, um, has, is its starting point in a video I published in summer 2008. This is this video, three minutes long. Tag, Mr. Hans Greifer. I have a new stück komponiert, and that's really just gerne bei der GEMA geltend to make. Dann können Sie mir das zuschicken? Ja, 70.200 bitte. Sie zitieren mal ein Musikstück, 70.200 andere Stücke. Und die müssen Sie doch alle dafür angeben. Die Aktion Product Placements soll ausdrücken, dass seit der alten Verfügbarkeit von Musik im Internet einerseits und dem zu Ende gegangenen Materialfortschritt in der Avantgarde Musik andererseits sich mit jeder Klangverbindung Fragen stellen, wie was davon ist eigen, was ist fremd. Manifest hat jedenfalls passend tausende Musikstücke, die kann ich doch alle in einem Musikstück wieder verwenden. Was ist heute Identität? Urheberrechte entstehen schon bei einer einfachen schöpferischen Leistung, bei einer sogenannten Schöpfungshöhe von Eigentümlichkeit bzw. Individualität. Es kann aber nicht sein, dass eine ästhetische Frage mit einer juristischen Frage identisch ist. Das ist jedoch der Fall beim derzeitigen Missstand des Urheberrechts. Und auf diesen Missstand mache ich mit den Mitteln der Kunst aufmerksam. 33 Sekunden. Im Zeitalter von MP3 kann man doch massenhaft Musik speichern und komprimieren. Und meine Kunst reflektiert ich immer so. Kreativität muss medial ermöglicht werden. Sprich, grundsätzlich legal sein. Öffentliche Aufführung, Sendung, Verbreitung oder Verfügbarmachung über das Internet und andere elektronische Netzwerke, Bearbeitung, Speicherung und Übertragung sind verboten. Kopieren ist eine Kulturtechnik. Für den Umfang gibt es keine Vorformulierung. Viele Leute denken, es gibt da eine Bestimmung, wie alles bis zwei Sekunden und nach vier Takten dürfen wir verwenden. Tatsächlich kann aber schon ein winziger Klangpartikel rechtswidrig sein, wenn dafür keine Lizenz vorgelegt wird. Es sind nur 70.200. Ich bin nicht grundsätzlich gegen die GEMA, aber ich bin für andere Einnahmenmodelle wie konsequente Abgaben auf Lehrmedien oder eine Kulturfettverletz, wenn der Kultur dabei auch ernst genommen wird und nicht die illustrierende Klangproduktion den Großteil abschöpft. Ich sage, Gott sei Dank hört Musik auf, Markt zu sein. Auf. Ich werde das Stück bei der GEMA auch anmelden. In einem offenen Brief haben die Zöglinge der Musikindustrie unsere Kanzlerin aufgefordert, den Schutz des geistigen Eigentums in Anbetracht der Internetpiraterie zur Chefsache zu machen. Sie bekräftigten sich mit dem Ausspruch, geistiges Eigentum sei das Öl des 21. Jahrhunderts. Was wäre denn, wenn alle Öl frei verfügbar hätten? So, what I've done was I made a small piece, only a 33 second long tape piece, which contains 70,000 quotes, and it was registered correctly at the GEMA, the German Society for Handling Copyright Issues, with this truck full of 70,000 registration forms. And so, now this is the piece. <laughs>
obstacles here. This is not pure concept art, since I've composed something in this 33 seconds. Uh, what I want to compose, I mean, I could have done it, uh, remain it really conceptually, simply show this technical compression, but in this case I wanted to show the range between, of course, thousands of bits of sound which create only noise, until two second long quotation in the end, which is definitely for everyone recognizable as a quotation. So, not its concept art, but not purely. And now let's take a brief look into the actual performance. Performance or music. Am 12. Yes. September 2008 is it soweit. Kreidler fährt mit einem Lastwagen voller Papier bei der GEMA Generaldirektion in Berlin am Wittenbergplatz vor. Etwa 50 Personen erwarten ihn vor dem Gebäude. Journalisten von Zeitungen und Blogs, Radio und Fernsehen, Musiker, Creative Commons Aktivisten und Politiker der Grünen sowie der Piratenpartei. Musik ist keine Kunst mehr. Musik ist eine juristische Fachdisziplin. Aber ich mache aus dem juristischen Bild Kunst. Das ist ein Musiktheaterstück. Das ist der erste Akt. Sie erwähnen die Aufführung einer von 500.000 Werkanmeldungen, die jährlich bei der GEMA eingehen. Wird mir das Stück legal sein oder illegal? Und das wird das illegalste Musikstück der Musikgeschichte sein. Darauf dürfen wir jetzt gespannt sein. Es wird natürlich in dieser Zeitalter eine neue Möglichkeit gefunden werden, für die Verbreitung einerseits und für die Vergütung andererseits. Ich begrüße sich von der GEMA. Ich bin selbst Mitglied von der GEMA, das würde ich sehr betonen. Ich wünsche mir sehr als Partner der GEMA, dass wir in diesen Zeiten Möglichkeiten finden, dass Künstler ihre Kunst verbreiten können, dass sie dafür vergütet werden. Ich hoffe, wir kommen dann ins Gespräch. So out of conceptualization emerges contextualization. The piece is the actual piece, uh, but also it's this pile of uh, registration forms. I mean, to compose the piece, it took me one day. It was most of it was programming. Whereas printing out these registration forms took me seven weeks every day of five hours printing out, uh, which was very expensive. Also, I didn't count the ink. I, didn't, I counted only what I have to pay for the paper, but I didn't think of the ink. And it was this video footage, this actual um, performance or music theater, so to say, the discussion around, and I also published an article around it. So it's an example of the contextualization. So, I think in the last um, years, the um, composers have come up with a new musical conceptualism or concept art, for example, Peter Ablinger, Cory Archangel, Alberto Bernal, Christian von Boris, Jens Brandt, Bill Dietz, Jared Forler, Patrick Frank, Richard Glover, Alexander Kravchenko, Wolfgang Heisig, Nele Hülke, Katrinen, Seth Kim Cohen, Patrick Little, Matthew Wright, Trond Reinholzen, Mark Sow, Manus Zangaris, Jennifer Borch, The Wandelweiser Group, Anton Vasiljev, and maybe myself, and I think more and more come, especially from the younger generation. And this uh, appearance of new conceptualists has reasons. On the one hand, I would say, in a late postmodern situation where music is more objective than ever, uh, or it's more object, objects, I mean, and um, because uh, this progress of materials research has come to an end, and instead we have a, this shift to, uh, to a Gehalts-Ästhetik, like Harry Lehmann says. So 
each music has at least its conceptual aspects. And on the other hand, due to the technological development of the digitalization, which gives the opportunity to realize now much more multimedia presentation ways, or you could also say that the digitalization, it somehow forces people to think more about musical concepts. But for me, I think it's a it's interesting and a challenge to do both. Tonight in the concert, we will see one concert piece, but three really composed score pieces. I would compare it with um, Gerhard Richter, who on the one hand makes these very expressive um, paintings, and on the other hand, these very conceptual paintings. I hope these sentences are not uh, considered as dogmas, but as um, inspirations for you to think in whatever direction. Thank you for the attention.